Hello, my friends, and welcome to another report. Today is day 289 of the Russia-Ukraine war, and so let's get straight to it. The Kiev Independent is reporting that the general staff, Russian troops attempting to advance in the Donetsk Oblast. So Russian forces are continuing their efforts to conduct an offensive in the Bakhmut direction while trying to improve their tactical positions in the Liman Adivka direction in the Donetsk Oblast. The General Staff of Ukraine Armed Forces reported on December 9th. Okay, so let's go to the deep state map and I can show you here. So this is Adivka right here and this was yesterday. You know what, I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit more so we can see. They've made a little bit, as you can see, just a little bit of an advance. I mean, I'm not sure how much that really is. And then if we come up to the Bakhmut area, we can see, okay, so this was yesterday. You can see that they had advanced here to the south, and then they lost some ground. They gained some ground up here. They lost ground, so pretty much uh, a wash. And we have an update that just happened, so let's see what happened here. The enemy continues to advance on the eastern outskirts of Bakhmut. The situation in Bakhmut junkyard has been clarified. The enemy captured the southern part of Vodinane. And I think Vodinane is up here. Let's see if we got anything up here. Probably, I think, right in here. Uh, so they did capture some ground. See that, guys? Okay. I just saw this uh, update here. Let me see here. Come on down a little bit. Nothing here. What a name right here. Okay. So they, they have made some ground. They're pushing really hard. Okay, guys. And let's get to uh, the losses for the day. So Russia lost another 310 troops. One armored personnel vehicle, three vehicles or fuel tanks, zero tanks, that's a surprise there. Uh, one artillery, no drones, okay. Looks like that is it. Wasn't that eventful of a day? Okay, Pravda is reporting Ukraine's armed forces targeted eight command posts and 11 clusters of Russian troops. And then we've got another report that uh, Russians hit a hospital in Kherson this morning. And Russian occupiers attacked a hospital in Kherson city on the morning of December 9th. There were more than 60 strikes in the oblast throughout the past 24 hours. Eight people were injured as a result of this. All right. Um, Okay, we got Forbes reporting. Ukraine has the weapons to attack Moscow, but Ukrainian leaders probably know better. And uh, I know they know better. Like at the same time, they know that uh, if Russia keeps on attacking hospitals and civilian infrastructure, they're going to attack Moscow too. And let's see here, I wanted to get to a, a point here. Um, Russia aims to terrorize the Ukrainian civilian population in order to erode support. Yep, okay, it's actually over here. There's no shortage of potential strategic targets in Moscow, and Ukraine has several ways of carrying out strikes. The simplest but riskiest uh, for the attackers would be human sabotage. And having said that, let's check this out, guys. 
we got uh, represented the class report is reporting representative of the German Chancellor Schultz, Christine Hoffman. Ukraine is not obligated to limit itself to its own territory, repelling Russian aggression. From our point of view, Ukraine is exercising its right to self-defense enshrined in Article 51 of the UN Charter. Okay. And then we have Yahoo News reporting NATO chief fears Ukraine war could become a wider conflict. And here specifically, the head of NATO expressed worry that the fighting in Ukraine could spin out of control and become a war between Russia and NATO, according to an interview released on Friday. If things go wrong, they can go horribly wrong, said NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. And it is terrible war in Ukraine. It's also a war that can be a full-fledged war that spreads into a major war between NATO and Russia, he said. We are working on that every day to avoid that. And having said that, I wanted to show you guys this. Uh, this is a close-up on the ground view of a massive fire and explosions at the mega Kimkil shopping center in Moscow. And so let's show you this here. I don't know what that was. If that was a drone that came in or that was definitely a huge explosion. Okay, and then I've got a couple of these guys I wanted to show you because this is uh, this is right in Moscow. So you know that Putin is watching this. This one has no uh, sound. Okay, well, you can see there the explosion. I don't see anything flying into it. However, there's so much smoke that uh, maybe it was covering up uh, the explosion if, it, if anything flew into it. And then we can see uh, the Kiev Post also reporting that a large shopping mall in suburban Moscow is in flames and the fire has engulfed 17,000 square meters of space. Like this is massive. Wow. That's got to be uh, giving the Russians uh, some food for thought. And then in the meantime, there's been another fire in Moscow. A building is burning in the vicinity of the MCC Vladikno station. So I wanted to show you guys this as well. can't play that copyrighted music you can see though guys like this is a human sabotage I mean so that's two fires right there let's keep it pushing because it just keeps on going uh, Friday Bavoniva day a tire factory is on fire in Bernal Russia the area of ignition is about a thousand square meters and here you can see this guys like Russia is getting uh, a taste of their own medicine if you ask me so I did want to show you guys that and then let's keep it pushing here okay I wanted to here in the States we also have uh, propaganda guys and so let me show you Tucker Carlson um, he says Zelensky is far closer to Lenin than George Washington he is a dictator a dangerous authoritarian who has a hundred billion in US tax dollars to erect, erect a one party state police state in Ukraine and I'm gonna play just a little bit and uh, 
show you how this is propaganda. I, this guy should be really just a Russian agent. And Soldiers to into churches. Well, the better part of a year later, it's getting harder and harder to believe any of this. Whatever you think of the war in Ukraine, it is pretty clear that Zelensky has no interest in freedom and democracy. In fact, Zelensky is... Can you believe he, even, he has no freedom? ...far closer to Lenin than to George Washington. He is a dictator. He is a, a dangerous dict authoritarian who has used $100 billion in U.S. tax dollars to erect a one-party police state in Ukraine. And that's not an overstatement. Over the past year, Zelensky has banned opposition parties. He shut down critical media by force. He's arrested his political opponents. He has sent soldiers into churches. He has sent soldiers into churches. Like, that's a big no-no in the States, guys. What, whatever, what Carlson doesn't uh, tell you, though, is that the churches are actually proxies for the Russian government. And here we have uh, an article, the Security Service of Ukraine serves notice of suspicion to the rector of Pachovi Theological Seminary, who actively engaged in anti-Ukrainian activities. Like, he doesn't mention this at all. He just said, he sent police into churches. And so, why did they, why did he do that? Well, the SBU has collected irrefutable evidence from proving that the head of the Pachovi Theological Seminary of Moscow's Periex Ukrainian Orthodox Church is guilty of anti-Ukrainian activities. Like you see the, the propaganda that we get fed, okay, and the Archbishop dis disseminated posts through social networks that humiliated the national honor and dignity of Ukrainians. He also contributed to inciting religious hatred and enmity. Um, to spin destructive content, the rector used anonymous profile on Facebook and picked up narratives of Russian propagandists to prepare his publications. And here, Tucker doesn't ever say that. Well, the better though. part of a year later, it's getting harder and harder to. He's a dictator. He is a dangerous authoritarian who has used $100 billion in U.S. tax dollars to erect a one-party police state in Ukraine. And that's not an overstatement. Over the past year, that's Zelensky has banned opposition parties. He shut down critical media by force. He's arrested his political opponents. He has sent soldiers into churches. Well, the well yeah. Like, he's done all that because they were all on the side of Russians. That's what he doesn't tell you. I I, I really can't stand Tucker Carlson, guys. Like, he is American propaganda. Okay, oh, now that I calm down a little, let's get back to the report. So Radio Free Europe, the battle for Bakhmut, Ukrainian city endures uh, freezing temperatures as shelling and fighting rages. Um, the Ukrainian city of Bakhmut has been described as a meat grinder due to being on the forefront of trench warfare, shelling and assaults that leave that have killed an untold number of soldiers and civilians as temperatures plunge, both sides are digging in for a long and bloody battle. And you can just see it here, guys. I'm going to leave a link in the description to this article. Um, honestly, it's just, it's heartbreaking is what it is. Like you can see all the destruction. Okay, and then uh, we've got the Guardian reporting um, only a hundred meters away or apart, Ukrainians and Russians face off in Donetsk and the eastern city of Bakhmut, where soldiers are suffering bitter cold and lack of supplies, is now the world's, the war's most violent front. And, uh, okay, let's keep it pushing, guys. Okay, so get this. Here's, you know, here we go with some Russian propaganda. Okay, United States are getting tired of supporting Ukraine, so there soon might be a coup in Kiev. Poles will take power, and Ukraine will split. Now, this is incredible. Okay, so let's come back to here. Okay, I think that they're already some 
Wearing this from the Kyiv regime, I mean personalities. Regime? Я имею в виду персонали. И если мы в ближайшее время увидим Соединенные Штаты, that the U.S. House overwhelmingly approves bill back in record military spending. And uh, the U.S. House of Representatives backed legislation on Thursday, paving the way for the defense budget to hit a record $858 billion next year, $45 billion more than was proposed by President Joe Biden. Okay, the House passed the compromised version of the National Defense Authorization Act, or NDAA, the annual must-pass bill setting policy for the Pentagon by 350 to 80, far exceeded the two-thirds majority required to pass legislation and send it for a vote in the Senate. So that is pretty amazing, guys. And then... Uh, we get a little update on what that actually means here. So no reports that it includes additional ammunition for HIMARS, 80,000, 150 millimeter and 105 millimeter artillery shells, equipment for combating AUVs, air defense equipment, high mobility multi-purpose vehicle, vehicles, hum, uh, Hummers, ambulance and medical equipment, about 150 generators, and fuel equipment. And this is, uh, this problem, the U.S. will probably announce a 275 military aid package to Ukraine today, routers. Okay, and so that's what was in that one. Ay, ay, ay. So we are, this thing that we're getting tired of Ukraine, are you kidding me? We appreciate that they're fighting for us. This is okay. So now we get to some more Russian propaganda, and here we go with Putin. Okay, Putin says you can't trust anyone. The irony of that, and then turns around and says you can only trust me, and that's how they live, zombies. And so I wanted to for you to hear play this. И такой вопрос: кому верить? Отчетам министерства обороны или бойцам с передовой? Верить никому нельзя. Только мне. Everybody laughs. I like that. Everybody laughs when you can only can't trust anybody. You can only trust me. Uh huh. That's an oxymoron. If you can't trust anyone, that means you can't trust him either. And here I got this video, guys, of a drunk Putin explains why strikes against Ukrainian infrastructure will continue because they started first by attacking the Crimean bridge. And he's holding a little champagne glass. Like the arrogance of this guy is incredible. And I reported yesterday that he's also made a, it's unconf well, it is kind of confirmed, but uh, undisclosed sources saying that he has got a secret plan to evacuate to Venezuela or Argentina, Operation Noah's Ark. And so I just wanted to play a little bit of this. Информационные вопросы, всякие фейки должны остаться в стороне. Не должны выполнять свой долг перед нашими людьми. He's crazy. Да и не надо быть особенно искушенным в этой в этом информационном. I don't even really want to play this, guys. Let's get to another one. Telegram is reporting that uh, Putin admits Russia can't supply clothes to the frontline troops. Like, and he's over here so arrogant with his little champagne glass and suit. And yet he can't, he admits that Russia can't supply clothes to the front lines. And this is reported by the Telegram. And I haven't checked out this video to see uh, commercial. 
All right, let me see here. Uh, Vladimir Putin has admitted that there has been problems procuring equipment and clothes for the hundreds of thousands of men called up to fight in Ukraine. Some 300,000 men were called up as part of Russia's part of mobilization, but the draft has been plagued by accusations of substandard equipment shortages. Mr. Putin asserted that some of the issues related to supplying these men we're now easing as he spoke of the Eurasian Economic Unit Summit in Kyrgyzstan. Okay, and then we've got another report by Sky News. Ukraine war. Vladimir Putin says deal may be needed to end conflict as he admits mistakes were made over mobilization. And the Russian president suggested peace talks may be needed to during a news conference. In Kyrgyzstan and then the uh, Arman Shereev a public figure and professional journalist from Kazakhstan replied to arrogant speech and threats of Russian ambassador in Kazakhstan Borodovit um, Russia is losing its influence among its neighbors and is rightly viewed as a threat Now, this was incredible, guys. So, Сегодня мне like... мое безупречное знание русского языка позволит дать ответ этому идиоту, послу Российской Федерации в Казахстане, некто Бородавкину, заявил о том, что в Казахстане живут нацисты, националисты. Если надо будет, то мы там проведем специальную военную операцию. Слушай. This and your ability to perform operations is broken. For nine months you have been receiving a beating from Ukraine. And I can say, God forbid you decide to come join us for an easy victory. <laughs> you will not have an easy victory. The entire Kazakhstan state will be strewn with the corpses of your conscripts. So when you talk about Russia phobia in Kazakhstan, I want to say to you people are the first to sow this Russia phobia. Ooh, people like you, Brovovich, people like Nikov, Fedorov, all sorts of Slovak and Menevev, who almost every day through your propaganda declare that the city of Altum needs to be bombed with an atomic bomb. That the northern eastern regions of Kazakhstan need to be captured and annexed by Russia. That the Kazakhstan language needs to be changed to Kazakhstan, Russiaphobia, is all you have achieved with your stupid actions. It gets better. Do you really think that Ukrainians just started shooting at you out of the blue? It was you who broke into someone else's house with fire and sword, and now you're getting a response. The same will happen to you if you come to our neighbors. Oof! You are idiots. You are cannibals who eat themselves. I am very happy. I hope that this rotten Russian Federation of yours will fall apart in the near future. It nicely stated there. Brodovich, if you want to see Nazis and fascists in Kazakhstan, look in the mirror and you will see the main Nazi and fascist. Slava Ukraine. <laughs> Aliga Kazakhstan. Wow. So, okay. I love that. I'm going to leave a link to that, guys. That was incredible. Okay, and so to end this, guys, I wanted to show this uh, art painting. Um, so this is of a high Mars. It's painted in a, Ukra uh, a Russian soldier smoking. <laughs> and uh, the title is Smoking is Bad by Go Boris Gra. And you can see the high Mars here is, you know, about to fire off a rocket at him. So I thought you guys might enjoy that. It's a beautiful painting. Um, and with that, guys, that is my report for the day. And I wanted to ask you guys, if you like this type of reporting, to please give me a like and subscribe to the channel. I try to report every day and try to make the report in an up, you know, in an upbeat manner. And try to point out the hypocrisy and the propaganda on both sides 
Um, as you can tell, I am pro-Ukrainian. I believe that what they're doing is fighting for freedom, and I support Ukraine. Um, having said that, guys, I appreciate your time. Um, and, uh, yeah, my friends, leave me a comment if you want to. Uh, let me know what kind of footage you'd like to see and uh, what kind of if you want me to report anything. So having said that, um, I wish you guys a beautiful day and Slava Ukraine, glory to the heroes, and I'll see you in tomorrow's report, my friends. Peace out.